do, do something which called uh, which leads to what is called liquid flow. So here is Patterson's example from his web page of what happens when we follow those commandments. So we just go through that twice in mind. So we describe the topology and design the control flow machine and present the results of linear simulations of the performance of the single processing element. Every factor is compared to the measured performance of advanced point normal and computer running is being quoted as shown as a control flow which is the entire system being programmed. There's a second one, which I shall not bother to read. And the third one. <laughs> the fourth one from there. The fifth one is the third The neat thing is this once you started this off, there's nothing you can do to stop. <laughs> Apart from the <laughs> now. You have to make a presentation, you need to be able to write it in something. Generally, my advice is use what is called a source array font, which means it doesn't have these screeny things near the base of the letters or near the top. So some fonts like Arial, Verdana, Tahoma, these are easier to read. Depending on the mood, if it's a very light thing, you might do something like Comics on MS. Uh, but there are some fonts which are difficult to read. They're okay for books. But Time Theory Roman, which is a standard default font in, in Windows, is not a good thing when you have just a little bit of text to read. Right? Courier, which is the, the, the typewriter font, is again not a very, it's okay for lines of code in the middle, but otherwise not okay for. Uh, uh, this thing does not have monotype perceiver on it. Uh, this was a font, if you remember the talk previously, in which the speaker started off with the. It's a very cloudy thing in which the title was, the affiliation was written. Very cloudy, uh, ornate script. Uh, use sufficiently large letters. I would suggest something between 18 and 24 point. So that is 24 point. Small point gets a little hard to read. That's 10 points. And you need binoculars for this one. Okay. Font choice is also dependent on the color. Sometimes color is important. So you, it's good to use a color that is not uh, has good contrast because if the contrast is not good, you will not be able to read well. Uh, using color just for decoration is distracting and annoying. You don't need to use a different color for each point. Right? And similarly, you don't need to be that creative in using color. <laughs> Many times people will show something and they say, I know you can't read this. Right? I mean, here it says, I'm like, walking in the middle of a fantastic shop. There are areas which are rural and not rural. So, this is why this slide is absolutely fine. After phosphor transfer, the broker was on and then passed on the cell. This is much more detailed view, but I'm sure you won't be able to read it. <laughs> okay, so you see PowerPoint has something built in. Isn't that useful? Right? So sometimes animations have to be very careful because they have a lot of, a huge palette of choices you can uh, choose from. And you know, it's okay if you use them once when it's needed. When it's really needed. Uh, and believe me, there's a simple effect called appear. In the first effect, I should have scrolled to find it. It's the first one that appear. Appear is generally the most, the best one to use. Uh, which, you know, doesn't do all this flying around and something, but it, it works. It appears. Right? <laughs> and, you know, otherwise you can enlarge things in PowerPoint. You can <laughs> things in PowerPoint. You can also have stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of options up here. Right? So, should be prepared to give your talk, I guess. Okay, remember Murphy's law. Okay, uh, things will go wrong, right? I mean, that was of course planned, but uh, you know, points. Many times 
different computer systems have different fonts. So clearly this one didn't have the font of cursive or the Kalimuthi font. Equations. Equations sometimes come with, uh, mostly, many times, equations, if they are not on the system which have Microsoft Equation Editor or something on it, look like what typically in Tintin happens when asterisks or when they have lots of galleys, you know, those letters that come. Uh, that's what equations become. Uh, right? And videos. Uh, videos are again very notorious. I mean, either because of the resolution or things like that, or Mac to PC, videos don't play. So, uh, these are things which are should be paranoid about. Always have your backup presentation and, you know, be prepared to do it without a PowerPoint, at least most of it is important part of it. Because most of that's right, anytime. Okay? Um, it's very irritating uh, to have, you know, uh, bad spellings in presentations. Right? And also, also grammar. I mean, grammar is also a thing. And generally, you know, if you, if you are, while you are doing it, uh, it would actually give you a squiggly red line wherever there is, it thinks there is a present, uh, spelling error. So, in the worst case, at least look at what has been underlined with a squiggly red line. Right? But of course, don't blindly believe in it because as you can see, you need to review it manually as software is not always smart. Right? Okay. It didn't detect any of those errors. Uh, okay, finally, I'd like to give you some personal tips. Uh, never ever read the title. Yeah. Okay. So the worst thing you can do, do is go and say that the talk today is on whatever your talk is on. Because mostly, may not be for the BSRP side, but mostly whenever you give a scientific talk, the session chair will introduce you and announce the title of your talk. So don't waste time telling us the title again. Right? In fact, we can read much faster than you can hear and tell us, and the title is going to be up on the screen, people will see it. Paraphrase the title. Tell them what you are going to talk about, instead of reading the title. This is exactly the same thing, right? But don't read the title word to word on the screen. It's just a waste of time. If you are a little unsure, and I do this still, if I am giving a talk somewhere and I want to be absolutely sure, the first minute is very, very critical. If you want, what you will say on the first slide, write it down. Write it down because after writing it down, you will feel that thing, you know, maybe this is not right. You say it is something else. And then you scribble it and write it again. And we will actually go through some six, seven iterations before you decide that this is what I am going to write, talk about. And the idea is to be able to connect with the audience in the first 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a huge amount of time. Remember TV commercials. Right? They are typically 20 seconds. It's too expensive to have 30 seconds and 1 minute times. And, and in 20 seconds, you are able to tell you a lot of stuff. Okay, because they focus on something. Because why? Remember that as the audience, you need to get their attention. Why should they listen to you when there are so many other things they can do? Right? And okay, assuming that by telling them what they are going to talk about, you have captured their attention, you are going to continue by telling them, why should I care about this? Which is why that background and motivation is very important. Okay. So, if your topic, for example, is high power anti guided arrays of diode lasers. Okay? Some topic. Right? It's probably easier to start, start up by saying, you know, everybody wants more and more power from a laser, like this laser pointer. But it's difficult to, you know, get a lot of power from a tiny laser which is in this. So can we combine different lasers together in a manner so that I can make them all operate together as one powerful laser? That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Something like this. I mean, this, this is all made up for uh, The other thing you need is a connecting statement between slides. Okay. So now, what happens is, remember you are telling a story, and in a story you need a link to go from one episode or one thing to another, and those are your the things that you are showing. Ideally, the last line of this slide or something should automatically connect to the next slide. Okay. So just see if there, there is a there is a nice thread that is going through your thing. If not, build it in. Maybe the last line can be a little question something which is going to be answered by the next slide. And so then you won't have to write a lot of text, but it's something or it, you, need, you don't even have to write it, you can say it. But just make sure that your presentation has something which connects each slide to the next and makes a logically compelling story at the end of it. Okay? And, you know, like chant this thing 108 times. There is always too much text. There is always too much text. There is always too much text. But how do we all make slides? We first start with the word document. And we copy that and put it into PowerPoint. And that is text. All you need is points. 
right? Just go through it and see how many words are there are not really necessary. If a word is not necessary, you don't have to have grammatically complete sentences with full stop at the end, you know, for making these little points. They can be the important keywords. So there is usually way too much text in most slides. You can go through it and see if you can remove things which are not necessary. Okay? Then, it's very boring to hear a story from start to end without a break. You need to build in a few gaps. You need these gaps. You need these gaps to connect to people. Right? You need to figure out by looking at people, are they with you? Are they sleeping? You know, are they completely lost? Right? You'll figure out how much whether people are really paying attention to you or not. You need to take a you know, take just a breath. Take it easy. You know, okay, am I on time? Am I going too slow? Am I going too fast? Take a, you know. Unless you, if you don't take a break, you never realize where you are. Okay? Taking a break is sometimes also very critical. You sometimes, not for a BSR presentation, but say you are at a conference where you got this really great result and you want to keep it on a screen for 5 seconds more than otherwise. You can't shamelessly say, hey look, boss, this is good. Okay, here it is. <laughs> okay. On the other hand, you know that it's going to take me 22 seconds to go through this slide. In my practice talk, this is how much it took me. But it'd be nice if it was there for some more time so people would actually see this, you know. Maybe if people looked at it for a little bit more time, they would actually look at it and say, wow, okay, this is interesting. So that is the right time, even if you're not thirsty, to actually decide to bring some up. That's the fact that you took a sip of water in the middle of your talk. But it gives you the several extra seconds your thing is on the screen and people will look at that because that's something you look at. So by not doing anything, you kept the slide on the screen for a little longer and you know got people to look at it. Okay. If you can, if you can, right, you don't have to go out of your way to do it. Try and insert something which is personal about it. Right? Something maybe a little bit of humor, a little story of something, how you got through it, you know, something that you can often, it's very difficult, it depends on the talk, it depends on what it is, but generally I find that if you actually look at it, you will find that you could actually relate this to, you know, I got this result uh, 3am in the morning in the lab and I couldn't sleep because it, I was watching actually the football match, <laughs> otherwise I would have got this result, right? Something like this which adds a personal touch to it, I mean, yeah, humans, whatever. So uh, those are, it's uh, there. And remember that the best thing that you have to communicate to people is yourself. More than PowerPoint or more than slides. It's you who you can actually you know, use your voice, use your arms and legs and whatever uh, to, to communicate. So use it. Don't stand like a rock. Uh, and practice. Practice, practice, practice again. Practice if you can with someone. Have somebody listen to you. Because even if they are your friends, uh, they will often give you a... Uh, you, you can look at a presentation 10 times and not find a mistake. If somebody who hasn't seen it will look at it and obviously seen it, because you won't see the mistake uh, because you is used to it. The other thing is, uh, PowerPoint gives you the option of going to rehearse presentation and it records the individual slide timings for each slide. And that is very useful because when you look at the slide timings, you will realize, oh god, this was an important result and you know in 13 seconds I was done. Or you realize that, oh I spent two and a half minutes on this particular transparency, so I'm, I'm not I'm really struggling to explain this and I must either cut out some stuff from this or simplify it or something. So having an individual slide time really helps know where I am either spending too much time or too little time and uh, it's actually very good because it helps you practice and ensure that you will be within the, the time that is uh, given to you. Okay? So all the best for your presentation and have fun. <laughs>